Welcome back. We're going to talk about some leukocyte disorders here for our 10th lecture. This uh, diagram from your textbook is um, illustrating for you again the process of um, um, hematopoiesis that takes place in your red bone marrow. And this diagram is really just focusing in on your different types of leukocytes or white blood cells. And so we've talked about these processes before. And we've also talked about how the formation of these different types of white blood cells goes through step-by-step -step processes. So these cells have different stages along pathways. And so keep that in mind as we talk about some of these disorders. Because some of these disorders, what happens is they're disorders that start in some of these immature type forms of the white blood cells that do things like start dividing out of control and become cancerous. All right, so some leukocyte disorders. Now we talked about before an elevated number of leukocytes. We had that on an earlier lecture, but let me put that here again. This would not really so much be a disorder most of the time, but leukocytosis is where you have elevated white blood cells. And uh, that's often just a natural response to an infection. If you have an infection, you need more white blood cells to help you fight the infection. All right, now leukopenia, on the other hand, is abnormally low white blood cell count. And sometimes drugs can cause that. Remember when we talked about aplastic anemia on um, the anemia lecture <coughs> or the erythrocyte disorder lecture? Anything that damages the red bone marrow is going to reduce uh, the total number of your different types of formed elements that you're making. So you'll have low red blood cells, you'll have low platelets, and you'll have low white blood cells. And so that condition is called leukopenia. Lots of different things can cause that. Leukemias are cancers of white blood cells, which means you have um, some type of immature white blood cell. So it's over here at this stage that starts dividing in an out-of-control manner in the bone marrow. And you just start overproducing these abnormal, immature white blood cells in an out-of-control manner. And um, this will eventually kill you. Any type of leukemia is eventually fatal if it's uh, not treated. <clears throat> the leukemias are named according to the abnormal white blood cell involved. So the next time you hear about some type of leukemia, listen closely because you'll hear names like a myeloid or a myelogenous leukemia. That means that that type of leukemia is developing from a myeloblast. So that's one of these um, committed cells derived from a myeloid stem cell. These are called myeloblasts. Those ultimately develop into these types of mature white blood cells that you see here. So if um, you know one of these cell types starts dividing in an out of control manner, you would have um, a myeloid type leukemia. A lymphocytic leukemia involves these cell types over here in the bone marrow start dividing in an out of control manner and become cancerous. Okay, uh, acute looking at, uh, leukemias can also be classified as acute or chronic. So an acute leukemia is one that um, those primarily affect children, but not always. I had a good friend who, as an adult, developed an acute type of leukemia. But those de uh, derive from these earlier stem cells, so up here, higher up the pathway. They start dividing in an out-of-control manner. Acute means it's very rapid. The cells are dividing in an out-of-control manner, and they'll generally wind up killing the patient um, much more quickly if they don't get treated. Chronic leukemias are slower, and um, so they take a longer period of time to progress, and sometimes they don't even treat you for a while when you have a chronic type of leukemia because they do progress so slowly. Eventually, you get to the point where you have to be treated. Leukemias are bad because you wind up with all these abnormal cells dividing in an out-of-control manner in your bone marrow. And so they wind up crowding out other cell types 
in um, the red bone marrow. So you wind up with decreased production of normal WBCs. You wind up with decreased production of red blood cells as well. So uh, sometimes one of the very first signs or symptoms of or uh, one of the first signs of leukemia is actually that a person becomes anemic. That happened with my friend who developed leukemia about 10 years ago. Um, he did survive, by the way. He's been cancer-free for about six or seven years now. But the, how he knew something was wrong, he was extremely tired. He was short of breath, just doing everyday normal processes. And it was because he had anemia that was due to the leukemia cancer he had wound up developing. All right, so when you have leukemia again, why do you actually die? The um, reason you actually die is you start bleeding internally very easily. Well, why is that? So we said platelets are important for proper blood clotting. So internal hemorrhages are due to a lack of platelets and blood clotting factors. Overwhelming infections what cells fight infections? Your white blood cells. So you just can't, you know, you can't survive without being able to do these types of things. Internal hemorrhages, we don't realize it, but all the time we have little tiny blood vessels inside our body that get damaged, they get cut open, but our blood clotting processes close those types of things off without us ever realizing it. Well, if you don't have the ability to close those types of little microscopic injuries to your blood vessels off that happen all the time because you don't have enough platelets around um, that can eventually lead to internal hemorrhaging and you can actually die from that. Treatments for leukemia as you guys know they're not very pleasant but they include things like radiation. Um, radiation damages uh, cells that are dividing very quickly. It actually damages DNA <clears throat> Um, which therefore, if DNA gets screwed up, DNA, those are your genetic recipe books that tell your cells how to function properly. Um, and so your cancer cells, because they're dividing really, really quickly and they have to copy their DNA all the time to make new copies of those genetic recipe books, they're particularly susceptible to uh, dying from radiation exposure. But that radiation also damages other cell types in your body that um, are dividing quickly like your red bone marrow. There are uh, drugs today that are more specific for leukemia cells. We're getting better at coming up with drugs that just home in on leukemia type cells and, and harm them without um, hopefully doing nasty things to the other types of cells in your body. Stem cell transplants, that's pretty radical. That's where they actually kill your own red bone marrow and then they give you chemo uh, cytoblasts uh, donor stem cells and that's kind of a dangerous procedure so they don't do that unless you're kind of out of other types of options. Alright so just a little bit there on some leukocyte disorders. Um, now what we're going to the next series of lectures we're going to uh, just mention blood clotting and uh, that's a very critical process for your survival as I was just mentioning if you can't clot your blood you're likely to actually die due to internal hemorrhaging and um, so those processes are called hemostasis. Um, hemostasis, you know, like homeo, um, homeostasis, keeping the body stable and functioning. Hemostasis refers to um, making sure blood is able to flow <laughs> properly throughout the body and closing off injuries to uh, blood vessels that um, can develop. So we'll talk about that over actually over the next series of video clips. I'm going to chop it up into multiple video lectures since it is a uh, fairly lengthy topic.